And once I've discovered which access point I want to connect to, now I need to begin a communications with that access point. And the 80211 standard defines that you should send in an authentication frame. And you can do open system authentication. Let's say this access point is open, it has no authentication mechanisms on it. Then I would send in an open system authentication request. In which case I would get an authentication frame response, which if the access point is not too heavily loaded, it will say, yes, you have authenticated with this access point. You can do a shared key authentication. And in this case, I send my authentication frame in and the access point will send me back a challenge text. I will respond back to that challenge text using my shared secret key. The access point will say, oh, this person obviously has the shared secret key and therefore they have successfully authenticated and then I'll get an authentication frame response message back accepting me that as authenticated on that access point. You could also do 8021x authentication and this is typically what you see being done in a business. And there's really two ways of doing this. You can do it at this point in time. You can send in an authentication frame and that will trigger an 8021x exchange with an authentication server. Or what you can do is you can do open system authentication at this stage and trigger in 8021x after you've associated and after you've got an IP address. Once you've done the 80211 authentication, you need to go on and associate. Now, association is forming a logical connection between the client and the access point. When I send in an association request frame, I'm also telling the access point about myself. I would tell it, for instance, what data rates I can support. Do I support quality of service? If I'm 802.11n, how many MIMO antennas do I support? The access point will then come back with an association response frame. And the association response frame includes what's called an association ID. And so from this point on, the client station has a unique association ID and is going to use that association ID in various exchanges going forward between the client station and the access point.